Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part 16 of the Design Patterns tutorial. In this session, we will discuss Introduction to Structural Design Pattern and we'll see different types of structural design patterns. Please refer to the previous parts of the tutorial before proceeding. In the previous session, we have discussed and understood the creational design patterns in details. We have also learned which design pattern need to be applied based on the project requirements. If you have not gone through them, we strongly recommend you to refer to the previous parts of the tutorial before proceeding further. Let's now take a look into structural design patterns. Structural design patterns are design patterns that ease the design by identifying a simple way to realize relationships between entities. From this definition, we can say that structural patterns define how each component or entity should be constructed so as to have very flexible interconnecting modules which can work together in a larger system. A structural design pattern also describes how data moves through the pattern. Structural patterns describe how classes and objects can be combined to form larger structures. These patterns describe how objects can be composed into larger structures using object composition or the inclusion of objects within other objects. Ganga 4 has identified seven structural design patterns which are adapter, bridge, composite, decorator, facade, flyweight and proxy patterns. Let's now look into the definition of these patterns. As per the Ganga 4 definition, adapter match interface of different classes. To simplify this definition, we can state that an adapter allows two incompatible interfaces to work together, which means the adapter design pattern allows incompatible classes to interact with each other by converting the interface of one class into an interface which is expected by the end clients. Leveraging on adapter improves reusability of older functionality. We will discuss this in detail in next coming sessions. Let's now focus on bridge pattern. As per Ganga 4 definition, bridge pattern separates an object's interface from its implementation. To simplify this definition, the bridge pattern uses encapsulation, aggregation, and can use inheritance to separate responsibilities into different classes. Bridge pattern decouples an abstraction from its implementation so that decoupling and abstraction can vary independently. The bridge pattern can also be thought of as two layers of abstraction. The bridge pattern is useful when we want to avoid a permanent binding between an abstraction and its implementation. Bridge pattern enables us to separate the interface from the implementation and improves extensibility. Also, it hides implementation details from clients. Let's now look into the composite pattern. As per Gang of Four definition, composite design pattern constitutes a tree structure of simple and composite objects. In object-oriented programming, a composite is an object designed as a composition of one or more similar objects, all exhibiting similar functionality. The composite pattern enables us to create hierarchical tree structures of varying complexity while allowing every element in the structure to operate with a uniform interface. The composite design pattern describes that a group of objects are to be treated in the same way as a single instance of an object. The intent of a composite is to compose objects into tree structures to represent part-whole hierarchies. Implementing the composite pattern lets client treat individual objects and compositions uniformly. If this is confusing at this point of time, don't worry. We will take a look at this into greater details with simple examples in the coming sessions. Let's now switch to decorator pattern. As per Ganga for definition, the decorator pattern adds responsibilities to objects dynamically. To simplify this, we can state that 
The decorator pattern enables us to add or remove object functionality without changing the external appearance or function of the object. Which means the decorator pattern attaches additional responsibilities to an object dynamically to provide a flexible alternative to changing object functionality without using static inheritance. Let's now switch to facade pattern. As per gang of four definition, in facade design pattern, we have a single class that represents an entire subsystem, which means the facade pattern provides a unified interface to group of interfaces in a subsystem. The facade pattern defines a high level interface that makes the subsystem easier to use with only one single interface. This unified interface enables an object to access the subsystem using the interface to communicate with the subsystem. Facade design pattern reduces coupling between subsystem provided if every subsystem uses its own facade pattern and other parts of the system use the facade pattern to communicate with the subsystem. Let's now focus on the flyway design pattern. As per gang of four definition, Flyweight is a fine-grained instance used for efficient sharing, which means the flyweight pattern reduces the number of low-level detailed objects within a system by sharing objects. The flyweight pattern defines a structure for sharing objects and focuses its capabilities for space efficiencies. Applications that use lot of objects must pay careful attention to the cost of each object. Substantial savings can be achieved by sharing objects instead of replicating them. Leveraging on flyweight pattern reduces in number of objects to handle. We need to use flyweight pattern when the application uses a large number of objects and the storage costs are high because of the quantity of objects and when the application does not depend on object identity. Let's now focus on Proxy design pattern. As per gang of four definition, in proxy design pattern, we have an object representing another object. The proxy design pattern provides a placeholder object to control access to the original object. We should use the proxy design pattern when we need a more versatile or sophisticated reference to an object than a simple pointer. Remote proxy and virtual proxy are some of the implementations of the proxy design patterns with virtual proxy being the most common used implementation. A remote proxy can hide the fact that an object resides in a different address space. A virtual proxy can perform optimizations such as creating an object on demand. In the next session, we will discuss each of these structural design patterns in detail with simple examples. Thank you for listening and have a great day.